Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. This is an important time of year for anyone who loves pure Vermont maple syrup. Although the heart of the traditional sugaring season is still several weeks away, producers have already prepared their sugar houses and laid out their tubing. But it takes more than a sugar house and tubing to make maple syrup. It takes knowledge. And in Vermont, maple knowledge and education comes from the University of Vermont Extension and the Vermont Maple Sugar Makers Association. They are once again teaming up to offer the annual Vermont Maple Conferences. To learn more, I'm joined by Mark Isselhart. Mark is the UVM Extension Maple Specialist. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So I hear some people are already tapping and it, getting maple It's true, syrup. actually. Some of the larger operations, mostly in the north, have started tapping early, so they have time to get everything done before the, the real season hits. Right. If you have weather that cooperates for sap flow, you're going to get some sap. And some of those operations have collected and boiled sap, actually. So That's the first first syrup of 2020 <laughs> has been made. It's been made. Yeah. Okay, but we're here really to talk about the Vermont Maple Conferences. So tell me just, what, well, what are they? So the Maple Conferences that Extension and the Sugar Makers Association run are two one-day events. There's one in Brattleboro, one on Hyde Park, and they have many, many talks, 20 different presentations really targeted to producers of all sizes or even people who are curious about getting into sugaring. And uh, it, it can be lots of different topics. It's pretty exciting. And UVM Extension and the Sugar Makers Association, of course, have collaborated on this for, for, many, uh, for, for many years. Exactly, yep. And we rely not just on Extension and, and Sugar Maker present presenters, but people from the State uh, Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, Sugar Makers, uh, lots of different folks bring their expertise to the to the presentations. Awesome. And so when, and, and you, you said where they are, but let's just go over that so people have a sense of, of where they are. Sure. So the first location is Saturday, January 18th at the Brattleboro Union Middle School in Brattleboro. And there's an introduction, but the informational sessions go from 1045 to 430. And there's another conference at the Lamoille Union Middle School, and that's in Hyde Park, Vermont. That's on January 25th. And the sessions, um, the informational starts uh, at 9.45, but actually the, the beginning would be around 8.30 uh, for those. And that goes till 3.30. Okay, terrific. And um, uh, and people can obviously get more information with the, at this yeah, website. Yeah, if they want to register, you can register online at vermontmaple.org. And you can click on the link for Sugar Makers and find the Maple Conferences uh, tab there. And you can either send in a paper registration or you can do a uh, online registration. Fabulous. And now, does does somebody need to be, you know, established and experienced sugar maker to, to participate in this? Absolutely not. It's really for people who are interested in getting into sugaring, people who are mid, you know, mid-sized or the largest operations. There's really something each... Uh, session for people of, of all sizes and even people who maybe are never going to make syrup but are interested in the process maybe they want to have a side business that utilizes maple uh, connecting with other sugar makers mm -hmm. understanding the industry um, it's a really great way to network so it's not just about making maple syrup it's definitely the the key the, the, right. the focus the but there's everything from the history of, of maple mm. um, maple tubing to uh, forest pests, health, that sort of thing. It's really, we try, to, we try to target as wide a breadth of topics that sugaring uh, can include, which is everything from forest health all the way to marketing. Well, what, one of the kind of frustrating things about going to a conference is you can't do everything. Yeah. So you guys have actually recorded some of this and, and, and have it available for people. It's, we get evaluations uh, at the end of every uh, conference. We ask people to fill them out. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? You know, what would they like to have differently? And one of the more consistent responses we get is there are too many options. We, I, <laughs> I, I had to choose, which is frustrating in the moment, but we take it as a, um, a good indication that we have a nice, big, broad uh, program. We have listened to that feedback and we're trying to capture some of those presentations, record them, and then post them. So you can find them on the UVM Maple Extension website and we have them for the past three years. Not every wow. se single presentation, but there's Maybe some there's of the more, more popular ones, mm -hmm. or the ones that people are saying, oh, I wish I'd, I'd gone to that one. Yeah. And, 
Yeah. F fantastic. And, and, and in fact, there's kind of a wealth of resources there. There are those uh, videos from, from, from past conferences, um, but you have other online resources in, that you would recommend. There are, and so there's been, um, the maple industry has grown tremendously in the last 20 years, just as our knowledge about how making syrup um, can be improved and made more efficient. And we have a lot of educational resources available. Some of them uh, you'll find on the, the UVM Proctor Maple Research website. There's also something called Vermont uh, Maple, oh, sorry, D Vermont Research, <laughs> let me try again, <laughs> mapleresearch.org. That's a good Got one it. for yeah. uh, academic papers. The Proctor Maple Research Center has its own YouTube channel. So mm. if you search for uh, Proctor Maple Research on YouTube, you'd find that. I already mentioned the UVM Extension Maple website has a lot, and the Extension Maple Business Program also has a lot. So there's a wealth of information right. out there for people. And if they go to the Extension website, you probably also have links to these other ones. Yeah, and that graphic we just put up, there's a lot of information on there. I'll put that one document there so people can find all the links and, right. and navigate from there. Awesome. And um, when, it, when it comes to maple sugaring today, of course, there's a lot of technology um, and, and new technology. So, um, you know, I, I would think the sessions are about that production and innovation. Tell us a little bit about what, say, a modern sugaring house looks like today. Right. So the, the image of an of a old sugar house with plenty of steam coming out of the roof and maybe some horses and buckets, um, that image is still very popular. The, in reality, modern sugar houses tend to be a little bit more um, uh, uh, interior, tends to be a little bit more um, modern where you can clean the surfaces better, mm. more efficient, less energy going out of the side of the evaporator and more under the pans mm. to, to cut down the energy use. Reverse osmosis is, is key Huge. to uh, cutting down energy consumption and emissions so that there's a direct relationship to how little fuel you use and how much emissions you put out during mm. that boiling time. We'll have presentations on all of those all those topics. So that's much more efficient, but I'm sure some people still do it the old fashioned way. Absolutely. And and what I've said before is it how you produce the syrup isn't as critical as is is what you put in the bottle and what the consumer gets. So if you're a small backyard sugar maker selling a little bit of syrup or a really large operation, the quality needs to be the same. So you need to check for the basics. You need to make sure it's the right density, color, clarity, and flavor. And everyone can enter the marketplace. It's a, it's a pretty neat right. industry where you don't have to be at a certain scale to be, to be involved. And even people are getting into just drinking sap. That's right. There are some businesses who just sell their sap um, and it gets turned into a beverage company, some in Vermont for sure. And uh, yeah, it's getting some traction. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, that's 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 about what I did. <laughs> what yeah. I did any. So, how is the overall health of Vermont's um, sugar sugar bushes? I think in general they're good. Um, like anything, the, the the trees in the sugar bush, just as in Vermont's forests, are um, respond to stresses in the environment. So you have periodic pests. We just come off a uh, period of defoliation from forest tent. Uh, caterpillar, which is a native pest. Mm. We uh, have small periods of drought, which drought can actually be quite a severe stress. Uh, it, it's not as visible to the, to the naked eye as maybe something more dramatic as a defoliation or an ice storm, but drought can be pretty, can be pretty significant. In, 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 in what yeah. ways? Does, how, how do we recognize so that drought is stressing our, our well trees? Well, we know just by the physiology of the plant that drought shuts down the tree's ability to produce new energy. Mm -hmm. So the photosynthetic mechanism gets shut down when there is an ample water. And so rather than defoliation that nibbles off parts of the mechanism, the whole thing will shut down if, it, if the drought is severe enough. So wow. something to keep an eye on. Uh, I know the Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation keep an eye on this, and they publish uh, information about how severe the droughts are. And, and you were talking about the defoliation of this, um, the, and we talked about it last time you were here, the trumpet skeletonizer. Yeah. Uh, so it's scary, but it doesn't necessarily really hurt maple sugar yeah. production. When you talk about defoliators, you have to kind of think about where during the growing season that defoliation is happening. When you have defoliation in the early part of the season, like forest tent, it can be more significant to the tree than the ones later. Like the picture mm. here is um, maple trumpet skeletonizer, which looks ugly. They nibble apart the, the leaves, but it tends to be at the end of the season when the tree has already gone through most of its production of sugar for the growing season. So 
it looks ugly, it, it can get people's attention and we will get calls about it. But from the tree's perspective, it's pretty much already made what it's gonna make uh, at okay. that point. And forest tent, is that something we should look for? Or so forest tent is a about? native pest. It, it comes and goes on a cycle of maybe 10 to 20 years regionally, not mm -hmm. the whole state, but different parts of the state. And we're just ending uh, the most recent outbreak. And it looks like the normal levels uh, have, been, have, have been reached and it'll probably be another 10 or 20 years before we see another um, outbreak. It's always a good idea wow. to keep an eye on your trees. If you have questions, um, you can certainly contact me, you can contact your county forester and, and try to answer some right. of those questions. And then squirrels can be devastating. Squirrels, you know, they, <laughs> uh, they, they do like to nibble and uh, they're curious to like, like many animals and uh, squirrels will, will do some damage to tubing systems for sure. Even brand new tubing, it doesn't so have to be an old system. Keep your eye on so that. Yep, yep, it's, uh, it's kind of the, the cost of doing business unfortunately for, for sugar makers, so they, they Stay busy making walk, repairs. Walk the line and, and uh, check it out and, and make repairs. That's and some right. people I hear have GPS systems that can see that. I mean, this is expensive stuff. This GPS on the tubing systems? Yeah. or Yeah, people map right. their systems and uh, yeah, okay. yep, for sure. There's lots of technology. It's not, not <laughs> just uh, buckets and horses anymore. Okay, well, um, before we go, I just want to recap everything that uh, you've told us about Mark. Um, these are the Maple Vermont Maple Conferences. The first one is Saturday, January 18th. It's at the Brattleboro Union Middle School starting at 10.45 a.m. And then on Saturday, January 25th, the conference will be held at the Lamoille Union Middle School in Hyde Park. The sessions there start at 9.45 a.m. Here's the website with more information, including registration. You can go to vermontmaple.org and click on the link to Sugar Makers. That's vermontmaple.org. Mark Isselhart, thank you so much for coming in and Thanks talking to us about, about maple so early in the season. All right. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.